The beta for automatons is now available for us to use. So today I'll be going through everything that's been made available to us in this beta, going over some of the changes made to existing blocks and features in the game. And then at the end of the video, I'll explain how you can get your hands on the beta yourself. Also, there may or may not be a leak of something coming in the automatons update that we're not supposed to know about yet. So stay tuned to see that. So let's get right to it and take a look at the new stuff available to us in this beta. So the beta only includes five AI blocks and the event controller, not any of the other blocks teased or leaked over the past few months. This is because the beta exists for us to test these new blocks and to make sure they are bug free before release. And I can tell you right now, I've experienced a few myself. So if you do find any during this beta, make sure that you report them to Keen so they can fix them before the official release. So the new blocks are the AI flight move, the AI basic task, the AI recorder task, the AI defensive combat, and the AI offensive combat. And also the event controller is available to us. Now, this doesn't mean that these are all the AI blocks that will be added in the automatons update. And this also doesn't mean that we won't get any more AI blocks in the future, but these are just the ones that we have available to test now. So let's go over what each of these blocks do. So the AI blocks and the event controller are both available to both small and large grid. And in order to build an AI drone, you need at least two of the AI blocks. The AI flight move is an AI block that you'll need on pretty much all of your drones, as it is what controls the movement of the drone. Once you've placed it down, you'll be able to see the settings of it. And as you can see on the right hand side, if there's any problems with it, it will show you in red on the right hand side. Now this one has a lot of errors on it as I've placed it on a static grid with no thrusters. So obviously it's not going to work as this grid can't fly, but I'm gonna ignore this for now and I'll show you it on a drone later. The AI behavior option here is what toggles the AI behavior on. So if you want to toggle the AI behavior on and off from your hotbar, you'd add this option to it. And you can see you can toggle collision avoidance on and off, potentially useful for missiles. Now there's four options at the bottom here, two of which we haven't seen before. The speed limit obviously dictates the speed limit that your drone can move. So by default, it's 10 meters a second. It can go up to a maximum of 100 meters a second, and it can go down to a minimum of zero meters per second. The next option is align to P gravity. This basically means that if you're within gravity, the drone will try to stay upright and in line with gravity. It's also worth noting that the AI move flight has orientation. So this is the front of it. And as you saw last time, there has an L on the side. So this is the left side and you have the back and then you have the right hand side. So obviously you want to orientate this the way you want your drone to face. Minimum altitude also only works within gravity, and this is how low you want the drone to fly to the ground. Obviously, depending on the size and shape of the drone, you don't want it to fly too close to the ground in case it hits it, but in other circumstances, you might not care about this as much. And the final two options are max pitch angle and max roll angle. And these two, again, only work within gravity. And this is basically how far the ship is allowed to rotate when within gravity, so it doesn't look a bit weird and end up upside down. As I said, it takes two AI blocks to build a flying drone. So the next one you're probably going to need is the AI basic task, which is indicated by this globe symbol here. And if you go into the terminal for it, you can see once again, it has toggle AI behavior on and off. So if you didn't want this specific task active, you could toggle that off. And by default, it's on follow player. So you can see it's got the follow me button. So if I click that, this grid, if it could move, would follow me. And you've got the distance. I can demo this with this cargo drone I've created here, which is set to follow me at all times and follow me as close as possible. As you can see, as I've set it to fly as close as possible, it might rub against the ground a little bit. If I turn around, it will now turn around to face me. And I can always access the storage it has on board. The other options are follow home and autopilot. Follow home allows you to select a list of homes for it to have. So these range from static grids to other ships to waypoints. So if I were to create a new marker over here and call it home, if I paste back in my cargo drone, set it to follow home and set it's home to home, you can see that now it's trying to get to its home point here. Now I think because it's close to a block, it's struggling as it's trying to avoid the block it's going into. Yep, now it's going underneath to get as close to home as possible. But you can see now that it's got a new home, it's going for that instead. As I said, home doesn't have to just be a waypoint or a static grid. You can see that the starting atmospheric miner is here, which means you can have ships following other ships with this. And at the bottom, as you can see, you can set the minimum range it can be from home and the maximum range it can be from home. So if you wanted it to be closer or further away, if you wanted to fly around idly around the home base, that's how you do it. For example, you have your fighters flying around your carrier and you have a minimum range that can go from the carrier and then a maximum range that can go from the carrier. The next AI block is the AI recorder task. I'm not gonna lie, this one seems the most complicated one of them, but it also seems to be the most powerful one of them. Now I need more time to experiment for this myself, but the AI recorder task can be used to record actions and then you can get your drone to repeat them. For example, you could use this to dock a ship, record the actions of docking a ship, and then you can get that drone to repeat that task. So whenever that task is then fired, it will then fly to where it needs to be and dock. For example, the AI mining demo we were shown a couple of months ago uses the AI recorder. As you can see here, it undocks from the miner, flies back to the base, drops off its cargo, and then flies back to the miner and then redocks to the back of it. 
It was also shown on the live stream yesterday that they recorded a path with it and then the drone they used repeated the path on loop. As you can see, I like the AI flight move. This has orientation, so you want to make sure you're placing this the correct way when you're using it. And if you go to its settings, you can see you have a button to play the recorded task and then an option to repeat it. Waypoints are created when you go down here and press record. You can show the recorded paypoints on the HUD by pressing this option here. And then if you go to your info tab, you can turn on show AI functions, which will allow you to visualize the path. I showed this on the live stream yesterday, so there's an example on screen here. This will allow you to debug how your AI is working. You've got record interval here, which is how often when you're recording the task, it puts down a waypoint. So you might want more waypoints or less waypoints, depending how complex the task is. And finally, at the bottom, you see it's got reference beacon. This is if you want to use the task at a non-set location, for example, on a moving ship like a carrier. You put a beacon on the carrier. You set that beacon to be the reference point for this task. And then when it repeats that task, it will do it relative to where that beacon is. I need my own time to experiment with this. The beta itself has only just come out, but this sounds very powerful and exactly what everyone has wanted. The AI Defensive Combat is one of two combat AI blocks being added in this update. And this one serves a more utility purpose than a combat one, despite there being combat in the name. I'm actually using one of my cargo drone here, and I'll show you why now, as the Defensive AI has a flee option here. So you can see when I hover over it, it gives you a list of when to flee. By default, it's never, so it will fight the target when it gets to it. Always means that if it detects an enemy within 2,500 meters, it will run away to whatever the waypoint is set to here. So if I get to my drone here, I go defensive and set it's home to home. You see I've got a hostile ship incoming. In a second, it should go, oh no, there's a hostile ship incoming. There you go, now it's detected it and it's flying away. Bye bye. So it should fly all the way back to the base. Assuming it doesn't hit this tree here. Oops. <laughs> I guess tree collision avoidance isn't on the list of features yet. And you can see here, it's made it back to the base and it now considers it safe. Now I will admit, I haven't tested the defend against options here, but it does appear that the defensive AI can also do combat, but you're probably gonna wanna use this one instead. The AI offensive combat is the final AI block available in this beta. And as you can imagine, it's used for offensive combat. Now this one has a lot more options than any of the other AI blocks so far. And that's for good reason, because this one has a lot to do. As always, it has the ability to toggle the AI behavior on and off. You can choose it to target enemies or enemies and neutrals. You can choose it to target players. You can choose its targeting priority, whether it be the closest, the largest or the smallest. You can select how often it chooses new targets. So if you wanted to check for new targets every five seconds, you can. You can choose which subsystems it targets. And then you have the most interesting options, the attack patterns. Those being circle and orbit, stay at range, hit and run and intercept. Each of these come with their own options below, so let's look through each of them. Circle and Orbit is the one I've tested the most, and this is where the ship will stay at a certain range, and it will fly around the target in a circle in that range and fire at it. Now, if you're in gravity, you want to select this option here, which means that it stays in a circle within gravity, and then you can choose which weapons it has. Using this option here, Facing Mode, it will then face the direction of static weapons. Now, as of recording, this option faces the opposite direction of the weapons, but you can change this option here to choose the manual facing priority and choose it to face front. Or if you want to do a broadside, you can choose it to face to the left or the right. And that way it will point whatever side of the ship towards wherever the target is. Now we also have stay at range, which is very similar, whereas the ship will try and stay at a certain range from the target and then will attack them at the target. So if you want to use Gatling guns, for example, you might want to set the minimum range to like 700 meters and the maximum to 800. And then it will always stay at the maximum range of the Gatling guns. Or even if you have weapons that are longer range than Gatling guns, you could set it out of the range of Gatling guns and then the ship will stay at that range, attacking the enemy target. And if they have Gatling guns, they just won't be able to hit you. There's also the option for evasive maneuvers, something I haven't tested personally, but it sounds very useful for dodging things like rockets. Next, you have hit and run, which was shown off on a teaser a couple of months ago. And this is basically your fighter hit and run tactics where it flies towards the target. And then when it gets a certain distance, it then breaks off and flies away, turns around and then flies back in. You can choose the distance that it breaks off. You can choose the distance it retreats to. You can choose how long it is before the next retreat. And you can choose the angle it retreats at. And if you're within gravity, you can choose pass over target where it will fly over the target rather than retreating to a random angle. Once again, you can assign the weapons it has. And this attack pattern is very useful. Building things like fighters where it flies in, gets a couple of shots up and then flies away. Finally, the one you're probably most interested in is intercept. Intercept is your attack pattern for missiles. All this attack pattern does is fly towards your target. As you can see at the bottom, it has override collision avoidance on it, which overrides the collision avoidance on the AI flight move to, you know, hit the target with your missile. Now you have three different guidance types, basic, target prediction, and portional navigation. Basic will just fly towards the target at all times. Target prediction will try to predict where the target is going and fly towards that. And then there's proportional navigation, which I'm not really sure how is different to target prediction, but I'm sure someone in the comments can let me know. Finally, we have the event controller. Now the event controller is the most powerful block and is probably going to be the block that revolutionizes space engineers. 
The event controller can detect things based on a list of criteria, which I'll show now. You can see here we've got events. There's a number of them from altitude, angle changed, cargo filled, connector connected, door opened, piston position, power output, stored power, etc, etc. And then you can set conditions on these events. For example, you can set cargo filled and then equal or greater than to so say 50%. And then you would set a block. For example, there must be a cargo container on here somewhere. Large cargo container, here you go. So when large cargo container number four is above 50% capacity, we can then set an action. So if you go to select actions, and then you could do something like make a light flicker or something like that. Obviously, I'd have to build something more specific. Using this on a random grid isn't going to help me because I don't know where large cargo container number four is. But on your own grid, there are lots of things this can be used for. For example, on the beta livestream, this was used to detect whether a door was open or closed for the automation of an airlock. So the door was automatically open and closed with the sensor. And when the door was closed, the airlock would pressurize and then the next door would open, allowing you to go out. Something that would have previously required many timer blocks in order to do. I know I'm personally going to be putting an event controller on all of my friends' grids to check how much hydrogen they have left in their tanks. And then when the hydrogen tanks get low, I'm going to turn off all of their hydrogen engines and then play annoying sounds in order to remind them not to waste all of my hydrogen. Now, this is just a taste of the new aero blocks available within this beta. And of course, I'll be doing more in-depth videos on each of them in the future. Like and subscribe if you want to see that. But there's also many more changes made in this beta as well. So let's take a look at them. The block that was previously the small grid ejector has now been changed into a connector, which means we finally have a one by one connector for small grids. Previously, the only way we could connect on small grids is to have these massive 3x3 connectors on them, which meant any drone you wanted to dock would have to have this massive waste of space on it. Now all you need is this one by one connector, which will allow you to build much more compact small grids. The custom turret controller has been upgraded with a new option for always aiming at the sun. So if I toggle this on, you can see that my solar panels are now facing at the sun. And now if I move the sun, the solar panels will now move in order to face the sun's new position. Previously, this is something that was only possible with a script. So this means that solar panels are going to be much more useful for those who previously couldn't use scripts, like console players, or those on multiplayer servers that don't allow them. Now, something that I've complained about before has finally been fixed, and that is weapon names. So now each weapon has the weapon type on the end of it. So previously, what was called the S10 is now called the S10 pistol. The S20A is now the S20 pistol. The MR20 is now called the MR20 rifle. And the rocket launcher now has rocket launcher in the name, rather than calling the Pro-1 and the RO-1. Oh, this is so much better. This makes searching for these so much easier. If you've ever had a weapon in an inventory, searching for it, if you didn't know the name was such a pain, I know the names now just because I complained about it so much. But back when I didn't know that they were called the S10, finding a pistol in a cargo container was just absolutely awful. It should be noted as well that they've removed the word missile from everything as well. So all of the weapons are now called rockets rather than missiles. As previously, I believe it was called the missile turret, which is just a bit inconsistent in the naming scheme of things. The custom turret controller has actually received another upgrade in the beta patch. And that's now, while using the custom turret controller, you can also control the grid it's on as well. So if I move my tank here, you can see that I'm able to drive around, that's fine. Previously, if I were to then switch to the custom turret controller, I'd then only be able to control the custom turret and not the rover it was on. However, now it's not the case. I can now drive around, I can use my custom turret, I can fire at my drone, and it all works perfectly fine. This means that now, when you're doing your tank battles, you no longer need someone to control the tank turret and the tank itself. You can just have one player controlling the whole thing. Now, I'm sure there's more changes in this beta that I might have missed. So if you find any, let me know with a comment below. So let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, leaks. To start with, let's go over some confirmations of things that were previously shown to us. First of all, in this picture here, these have been confirmed to be 2x2 two two wheels. So yes, that means that 2x2 two two wheels are finally coming. So look forward to that coming when the update actually comes out. This vent block on the teaser we were shown the other day is actually the back of the event controller, as you can see here. So unfortunately, this panel doesn't slide down, but that doesn't mean these other vent blocks we've seen don't work. It just means that this one specifically isn't a vent we can enter. And the final thing, which I don't think we were supposed to see yet, if you press P and go to the paint tool, you see that there's a new thing here, a scroll bar. Now, previously, there wasn't a scroll bar. There was only enough textures to fill this 5x5 grid, which means there's a new texture here. And here it is. Plastic armor requires the automatons DLC. Isn't that interesting? Something for you to look forward to when this update finally drops and we finally get the DLC to go alongside it. So we have the final thing to look at. How do you get access to this beta? Well, for starters, this beta is only available for this week. Now, whilst they have said it might get extended, for now, it is currently only available for this week. So if you're watching this in the future and you're thinking, why can't I get access to the beta? That's why. It's also important to note that this beta is meant for testing. So whilst it's fun to play around with all the AI and the event controller features, don't forget that if you find any issues, you need to report them in order to make sure that they are fixed for the official release. So let's get on to how you get it. If you're on Steam, if you right click on Space Engineers, go to Properties and go to Betas, you can see that I already have it selected. 
by default you'd be on none and then you go to here scroll down you've got automatons beta click on that and it's as simple as that it will just start downloading you'll see that you have the automaton beta thing written here and then when you play the game you have access to these ai blocks now people always ask me why i don't do xbox content that's quite simply i don't have an xbox so that means i can't show you on the screen how to get the beta on xbox however in the description below i will link space engineers official guide on how you can get it on xbox now the only other thing to mention is that when you close the game and you're running the beta this page here will open up and it's just a quick survey that you, they want you to fill out once you've been playing with the beta so just fill it out as you see fit this is the section here where i added some of the bugs i found whilst using the beta but obviously you can report the bugs on the keen forums as well so what are you most excited about to play during the beta let me know with a comment below and as always like and subscribe for more space engineers content vita vita Vita.